now on Broadway. An Enemy of the People is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, rings variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, An Enemy of the People is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An Enemy of the People on Broadway through June 16th only. On today's Smart 7, signs of hope for Julian Assange, OJ Simpson dead at 76 and lots more. It's Friday 12th of April, it's World Hamster Day and happy birthday, Searsha Ronan. The Smart 7, it's news but not the news. Of all of Rishi's five pledges, it's the pledge to cut NHS waiting lists that seems to be the hardest to achieve. The Prime Minister got more bad news on Thursday as new figures showed that waiting list numbers remain at near record highs, with over 7.5 million treatments waiting to be carried out. That is down slightly on previous months and the cancer waiting time was met for the first time. Health Secretary Victoria Atkins says ongoing industrial action hasn't helped and fresh from making a deal with consultants, she was keen to see junior doctors back in her waiting room. With junior doctors, my message has always been, if you come to the table with reasonable expectations, as the consultants did, we will be able to find a deal. Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting wasn't in a mood to mince words, though. The Prime Minister has failed in the promise he made to the country to cut waiting lists. They're higher than they were when he became Prime Minister. We see the NHS still in the grips of the worst crisis in its history, and we can't go on like this. Julian Assange has spent almost five years in Belmarsh Prison as he battles a bid to extradite him to the US to face 18 espionage charges which were originally lodged when Donald Trump was president. His legal team secured a partial victory last month which saw the extradition blocked until the US provided assurances that he would not face the death penalty. That seems to have escalated matters in the US government and Joe Biden gave the first solid indication that his government might in fact drop the charges. Assange's brother Gabriel Shipton says that the long-running campaign to free Julian is finally having an impact. I think a lot of people are seeing the writing on the wall now that this is seen as a complete scandal around the world. It's not popular uh, with the electorates in any any of the countries uh, and it could be easily brought to an end uh, by the United States Department of Justice. Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has been one of the loudest voices in calling for Assange's release and return to Australia with his country's parliament passing a motion to that effect back in February. He says there's no political benefit to continuing the case. I believe this must be brought to a conclusion. Mr Assange has already paid a significant price and enough is enough. There's nothing to be gained by Mr Assange's continued uh, incarceration. 13 people died in a strike on Iran's consulate in Damascus last week, including Brigadier General Mohammad Reza Zahedi, who was a key figure in Iran's Republican Guards, Quds Division. Israel hasn't formally admitted to the strike, but Iran has made clear it is hell-bent on retaliation, with US intelligence expecting either a direct drone strike or a missile strike on Israeli targets. The US is believed to be working behind the scenes to avoid another open conflict in the region and has vowed to provide ironclad backing for Israel in the event of an attack. The Israeli Prime Minister seemed keen to emphasise the US support as he spoke at the Telnof Air Base in southern Israel, directly in front of US made and supplied F-15 fighter jets. We are in challenging times. We are in the middle of the war in Gaza, which continues in full force. But we are also preparing for scenarios of challenges from other arenas. Whoever hurts us, we hurt them. The death was announced on Thursday of O.J. Simpson from prostate cancer at 76. He was a man who had huge success as a football player, then went on to become a Hollywood star, but at the height of his fame in 1994 was accused of killing his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goodman. The brutal manner of their death shocked America and the whole world watched the so-called trial of the century live. Incredibly, he was acquitted of the murders, although three years later was found to be liable for the deaths in a civil court and ordered to pay over $30 million. He went to jail for a botched robbery in 2008 and even wrote a book called I Did It, in which he laid out how he might have committed the murders. He was unrepentant to the end, even when asked by a local TV crew about rumours that he had terminal cancer. Hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> 
No, I, I'm not in any hospital. I don't know who put that out there, but whoever put that out there, I guess it's like the Donald say, can't trust the media. Still to come on the Smart 7, a rare home defeat for Liverpool and fair warning Maroon 5 are coming back right after this. Now on Broadway, an enemy of the people is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, raves variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, an enemy of the people is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An enemy of the people, on Broadway through June 16th only. Welcome back. Thursday night saw the first legs of the Europa League and Europa Conference League quarter-finals get underway. Liverpool hosted Atalanta, while West Ham travelled to Germany to face Leverkusen. In the league, Aston Villa took on French side Lille and won 2-1, giving them a narrow advantage for the second leg. Things didn't go so well for West Ham, who lost 2-0 and have work to do in London next week. Liverpool had a nightmare at home to the Italian side Atalanta and lost their first home game this season. The score was 3-0 and Jurgen Klopp didn't sound too happy with his team. We played a bad game, we deserve to lose and we must feel that now. But... Um, congratulations, Atalanta. Really well done. If I say Maroon 5, there's a good chance that you'll reflexively say moves like Jagger or equally likely Oh God. The band have actually been together since high school and became Maroon 5 way back in 2001, but their last big hit was Girls Like You with Cardi B in 2018. Lead vocalist Adam Levine has been busy, though. His production company made the new Colin Farrell TV show Sugar, amongst other projects. He popped up on The Tonight Show to tease new Maroon 5 music and explain how their iconic hit happened. What's crazy about that song is that when we, it was, we were bouncing ideas around for the song, I think initially it was like he got the moves like Jagger and it was kind of supposed to be for a female artist to sing. I was the only idiot crazy enough to say, like, what if I say I have the moves like Jagger? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, are you sure you want to do that? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Bridgerton is coming back and the corsets look tighter than ever. The third series of the Regency-era Netflix drama is on its way, with eight episodes split into part one and part two. This time, the story focuses on Nicola Coughlin as Penelope Featherington and Luke Newton as Colin Bridgerton. The two had a falling out, but reunite as friends when Penelope sets her mind to finding herself a husband. Expect lots of high drama and ladylike giggling when part one drops on May 10th. Oh, it's good to see you. Is it? Something wrong? Seems as though every Bridgerton was born to attract notice. For some of us, notice is very slight. If a husband is what you seek, let me help you. Are we not friends? Friends. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes and we'll give you the world. Now on Broadway, an enemy of the people is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, raves variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, an enemy of the people is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An enemy of the people, on Broadway through June 16th only.